Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera and my second video of the day from Hinokicho Park where it continues to be a beautiful day. Uh, there are a lot more people here than when I arrived here about 45 minutes ago. Uh, this park is one of the more popular places to visit when the weather is nice, especially in the springtime. Uh, everyone is setting up their picnic mats and small tents and things like that and the shops and restaurants around here are doing a pretty good business as people go to buy food and snacks and drinks and things like that. Anyway, uh, the subject of my second video today is going to be one which I've received a lot of requests about over the past few months, or maybe the past couple of years, and it is the Super Fujika 6 medium format folding camera. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store as well, and it is also called Japan Vintage Camera, so if you'd like to purchase this camera or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my online stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So the Super Fujika 6 uh, was introduced in the mid-1950s and was an amazing camera. This is one of my favorite cameras from this era uh, it, for a number of reasons. Uh, first, it has a really wonderful lens, a 75mm f3.5. Uh, what do they say here, Fujinar lens, and uh, it features a really good range of shutter speeds from B and one second up to one five hundredth of a second. And what I really like about this camera is the viewfinder rangefinder system. It has quite a large viewfinder and a very contrasty uh, rangefinder system, which utilizes a red filter over the, the rangefinder mirror. Uh, this is kind of a modification that some people have done to Leica's and things like that, especially the earlier Barnack Leica's to increase the, the focusing contrast. This is their original equipment in the Fujika Super 6. Uh, the Fujika Super 6 it was a rather popular camera uh, and quite popular here in Japan, although it was designed primarily for export. Uh, in the mid-1950s, the economy in Japan was improving quite a lot and people here could afford nicer cameras. And so, uh, yeah, I, I still see quite a few of these on the market here. Uh, they're a little bit expensive compared to cameras like the, say, the, the earlier Konica Pearl cameras or uh, the Olympus 6 cameras or the, the large number of other Japanese medium format cameras, uh, mainly due to their, I guess, more modern and sophisticated design. Uh, I think this camera is very comparable to the Pearl 4 camera when it comes to the quality of the lens and the quality of the camera overall, especially the, the focusing system. But it as it was produced in much larger numbers, this camera tends to be a lot less expensive than the, the Pearl 4. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the uh, Fujika 6. The first thing I'm going to do before I get started is fold up the camera. And to fold up the camera, we have these things here that look kind of like ears. And you just pull back on that and then push the film door shut and then the camera is closed and you can either put it in a case or fit it in a coat pocket or uh, if you wear like those baggy jeans from, uh, from way back when you could actually put them in your jeans pocket. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top here and on this side here we have the, the film winding knob and the Super Fujika 6 features a mechanical film counter uh, just like the Pearl 4 though it's located on the opposite side. And you simply wind it until the first number lines up in the window, which is located on the back. Then you would charge and fire the shutter, and then to move to the next frame, you push this little lever here, and that allows you to wind up the second frame, or third frame, or fourth frame, or whatever. On the top here, we have a shoe for mounting a flash gun. Uh, this camera is, of course, designed to use the old bulb-style flashes with a preset aperture and preset shutter speed. Uh, the aperture is usually something like maybe f8 at 1 25th of a second. Uh, it works quite well, but uh, you can also use a more modern flash on this camera. Uh, I'll discuss that when we open up the front. On this side here, we have a film-loaded indicator. And in the front here, we have the shutter release button, which accepts a standard cable release, which was not actually a common feature on a lot of these cameras in the 1950s. The Pearl 4 uh, had this feature, but it was actually separate from the shutter button. The shutter button on the Pearls usually tended to be on the front cover, and sometimes uh, they had a, uh, an adapter or a place where you'd put in a cable release. And many other cameras, you need a sophisticated adapter to adapt the the cable. And it's important to have a 
uh, a cable release on cameras like this because uh, these cameras are re really well suited to long exposures for things like landscapes and things shooting at smaller apertures and uh, when you're shooting on a tripod uh, and uh, for these things it's really important to have a cable release and a stopwatch for doing your exposures so uh, a really useful and I think necessary feature. Uh, behind here we have a dial here which uh, you use to uh, remind you what kind of film you have located in or loaded in the camera loaded I should say uh, it makes no difference where this is set when you're using the camera it's just a simple reminder to let you know what kind of film you have loaded inside on the bottom of the camera we have a uh, standard quarter inch tripod socket this one is removable uh, so you can adapt this to a larger 3 8 inch tripod uh, these are aluminum the adapter and the bottom part itself so um, more than likely, if your camera has the quarter inch adapter, you're probably not going to be able to take it off because they tend to get stuck on there. And on the other side here, we have the knobs which you pull down to release the take up spool and the film. I'll discuss loading the film uh, pretty soon. Uh, to open the camera, you push down on this big chrome button in the front and it pops open like so. And uh, all the important stuff is located, of course, here on the shutter assembly. Uh, the first thing we have here is the focusing tab on the bottom and as this is an early camera uh, designed mainly to be exported to places like America and the UK it's arranged in feet. In front of that we have a depth of field scale and uh, it's a little bit smaller than like on what I, the, like what I showed you earlier on the Olympus 35S camera but still in a good location and quite easy to use. Um, I like how it's offset here so you can kind of set your first number on the distance to uh, the end of the focusing scale. For example, I set, uh, say, uh, infinity to f8, and so anything between, say, uh, 10 feet and infinity will be in focus if I'm using f8. In front of this, we have the, uh, excuse me, aperture lever, and we have the aperture scale located here on the front. And there's a red mark here which is just up before f11 and I believe this is for use for use when you are using the uh, flash uh, I, th I think I said f8 earlier for the flash it's actually closer to f11 right here we have the flash sync socket if you are using a flash with this camera uh, you can follow the instructions on the flash setting it to whatever film speed you're going to use and just use whatever settings are recommended by the flash but uh, be aware that when you're shooting at larger apertures that the aperture lever might, you know, it's going to go really close to the socket and, and make, it'll make it a little bit more difficult to use. In front of that we have the shutter speed ring and we have a full range of shutters here. This is a Seikosha rapid shutter which is very similar to the Compour shutter. Actually quite easy to work on if, uh, if it needs work. Uh, it has the same range of speeds from B and one second all the way up to one five hundredth of a second. It doesn't have detents, so you kind of have to be careful not to knock it out of the shutter speed you have selected. Uh, like the earlier cameras, uh, there's a booster spring for the one five hundredth of a second speed, so it'll be harder to push it to that speed. That's entirely normal, so don't worry about it. Uh, here we have the shutter charging lever, so uh, when you wind the film, to the uh, next exposure when the number is lined up in the middle of the uh, counter. You would charge the shutter, you would set your shutter speed, and say if I were shooting here in the shade, I would say, uh, I like to shoot at f8, that's my favorite aperture for general photography, so set this to f8, and around here maybe, oh, uh, today, one one hundredth of a second, because I'm sitting in the shade, and just to press the shutter button, and that's all you have to do. Uh, as I said before, this camera comes with a, or maybe I didn't mention it before, it comes with a wonderful Fujinar 75mm f3.5 lens, uh, which I think is quite comparable to the 75mm Hexar lens, which came in the Pearl 4 and later Pearl 3 cameras. Uh, great performer, and all the photos which I've seen taken here in Japan with these cameras are quite wonderful. Uh, here at Hinokicho Park, we're located right behind the uh, Fujifilm headquarters and the Fujifilm Square Museum where they have an example of one of these cameras inside and from time to time they have examples of photographs taken with these cameras so a really wonderful lens on this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to load the film in the camera that's quite necessary to know with one of these. Uh, on the bottom side here we have a tab which you pull down to release the film door. We have a couple of chambers here 
Uh, the film the take up spool is of course going to go under the film winding knob on this side and you're going to put your film here on this side. Uh, you'll have to pull down these levers to put the film in, in and the take up spool on the other side. Uh, if you're shooting film with one of these you kind of have to wind it all the way till uh, it releases. This one is pretty cool because it has a release here from the door. Some of them don't. So this sets to zero. Uh, go ahead and pull your film across. Before you put the film in the take-up spool, I always bend a very sharp crease in the paper before I put it in the slot. And as I turn it, I make sure to push down on my thumb and pull on the paper. Because often when you're trying to wind with just the knob, the paper pulls out and it's kind of a, a, a pain in the backside. So uh, I, I, I try to put it in this way to make sure that the, the paper back gets fed in and is gripping properly in the spill. Spool. Simply wind the film and as the paper comes across eventually you'll come with uh, you'll see arrows across the paper backing. Those have to line up with these white marks on the top and bottom. Once they are lined up close the door make sure you latch it fully that the latch isn't down you don't want to, the door to pop open and then start winding until the number one comes up like so and the camera is ready to use. So uh, that's it for my video about the Fujika or Super Fujika 6. Uh, as I said before, I sell vintage Japanese cameras on my Etsy and eBay stores. I, or excuse me, my Etsy store and my uh, store Japan vintage camera. I've got this one here and I've got a couple more of these on the way. This one is already spoken for by uh, someone else who has been uh, trying to get one of these cameras for quite a while. Luckily, I came across a couple of more uh, nice examples and I'll be posting those for sale soon. So if you're interested, uh, please visit my online stores by clicking the links in the description below the video. I plan to make more videos uh, in the near future. If you'd like to see these, please subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. That always helps. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.